Hey Warlocks, this is Johnny Dim, and today we're going to show you how to play Stratos. Stratos is a board game, it's a strategy board game. Um, there's a lot of different elements, adventure elements, uh, combat elements. It's a really well-rounded game, and if you like, uh, let's say, games like Banner Saga or Final Fantasy Tactics, those are video games, or an older one, Heroes of Might and Magic, um, they're all... They're all combat type games but where the placement of your units is very important so there's a there's a tactile a tactile uh strategy type of thing going on um also it's kind of like settlers of Catan in a way so there's elements of that because there are resources that you have to farm um in order to to do stuff so this would be a sample board normally the combat board is going to be much bigger than this in fact this is not i don't think a standard board for any of the uh, scenarios, but the great thing about this game is it's also flexible. So there is no standard set of boards, or there's no standard board that you can play, that you would play. Like all of these are just tiles that you can actually move. So see, you can just you know do that. There are some stuff in the manual in the rule book where it actually has stuff that is set up in a certain way, and you can play those particular ones if you want. What's really cool about this is the creators are, they, they want feedback from people, and they can actually submit, they're trying to build a community community for the game, so that you can actually submit different stuff that you've created, uh, so that you can get stuff published on maybe their website or something like that. They've, they've talked about developing that. Uh, we did meet the creators here at Warlocks. Uh, they were down here in Houston for a couple conventions, the Space City Comic, Comic Con and uh, uh, Comic Palooza. Uh, they both uh, at both of those conventions they sold a lot of their board games so they had a lot of success in here in Houston with it. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna get we're gonna, we're getting into this thing. So essentially, what you got with this game is you have as of now they've talked about expansions possibly in the future, but right now we have the five characters. Okay, so each of these character cards has two sides. So they're this we're looking at the peasant right now. This is the peasant. And if you flip it over, you have the cultivator. So we're going to go through each of these characters, and we'll explain kind of what they do. So no matter no matter what you start off with, because there's different scenarios that have you starting with different characters. Every character um, during a turn can do a couple actions. So one of those actions that they can do is each character can harvest resources. So each one of these tiles will give you a different resource when you harvest that the, the that land for resources. These green tiles that will give you actually corn, because they're farms, um, you'll actually get spice from the sand tiles there, and you'll get, I believe this is oak from the forest, so wood, you know, oak, whatever. Um, there's also a, another resource um, called the gem. And you can see here, this is a, it's a blue one. It does not actually go with the blue tile. I just wanted to introduce this. This is something we, we may talk about later, maybe not. But this actually is a wild card, so you can use this for any type of um, resource you want when you cash it in. So essentially, you're going to do that a lot in the beginning of the game, you, in most of the uh, scenarios that you can play. The peasant uh, has a cool feature where he can actually roll a d4 uh, and get that many of that resource um, except a four. If he rolls a four, he fails. So he could actually say, you know, he's, I believe it's called power cultivating or something like that. It's not important. What you do is you roll and then I got a four so I would have gotten nothing. So that's kind of his specialty is actually uh, farming and uh, cultivating or, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So that is the peasant's specialty is actually doing a power harvest is what they call that with rolling the die. So in that case I would get would have gotten two. The peasant's piece looks like this. So that I, that is, this is actually what sits on the board. So let's just put them there. And there are different slots. I don't know if you can see that, but you can see there, there's different slots for different things around the uh, around the, the piece. And there's different things you can put in there. So one thing that he has to start off with in one of these slots is his health. So I put a little thing there. Um, 
and that is his little health uh, tab. And those look like like this. Anyway, so he's got his health tab. There's also one for spirit. Uh, there's one for uh, defense, I believe. Yep, and defend, uh, equipment, uh, and then promo, which is short for promotion. So each of these these characters can actually be uh, promoted, and it's on the back side, like I think I said before, uh, and cultivators on the other side. One of the advantages of the cultivator is the fact that uh, when he rolls his uh, D4, when he wants to do the power harvest, he actually cannot fail. So if he rolls a 4, he gets 4 uh, of that particular resource that he's farming. The cost of each character to initially put him on the board, if you don't start off with him in the, in, the, in the beginning of the game, is actually at the bottom of the card. So, if you want to just buy a, a peasant outright when you already have one, if you want just another peasant, then it would be one oak and then two corn. And to upgrade them is, on, is, this, is the price that's on the back there, to, on the back where it says cultivator. Um, so it's actually the same. Uh, in the mage's case, it's actually going to be the same as well. I think they're all the same. So you're basically paying for that character again to upgrade them, to, to promote them. The next character we're going to talk about is the mage. And there's the mage piece. We'll put him right there. So the mage, I don't know if you noticed, but he actually has a different thing. He has spirit and the health. The, the, the peasant did not start with any spirit. The, uh, the mage does. The, mage, the mage's deal is casting spells, so that's what he gets. So when the mage first comes onto the board, you actually get to draw a mage, a mage card, which actually has a spell on the other side. Uh, in this case, we drew Meteor, which actually does damage uh, at a distance. Now, the first time you ever cast a spell, you will actually get credit for uh, a prosperity point, which is actually the kind of the currency of winning the game. Uh, once you get 10 prosperity points, you do win the game. Uh, and there's, a bunch of, there's different ways to get it get those points, which is also the cool thing about this game, is, is the versatility in, in actually winning the game. So if you wanted to, uh, to be mage heavy and just cast spells, or, or if you wanted to explore uh, and get equipment and stuff like that, uh, which we'll talk about next is the, when the explorer, when, when she does her thing. Uh, but no, you get, you get points for just exploring and, and getting things uh, and items. You, get, you also get credit for, in the case of the soldier or the archer, you get prosperity points for actually defeating uh, and bringing the health to zero of your opponents. Um, you can also get it by just purchasing them by getting resources, which is uh, what the peasant and the and the cultivator does. So like I said, the, yeah, a lot of versatility in this game. Uh, the mage, like we said, he, he casts spells. Uh, the first time you cast just that spell. You can use that spell again once you've cast it the first time. But it's only the first time that you cast it, you actually get the prosperity point for it. And that'll stay on your, on your side of the board, and you can just count that it actually has it in the, in the corner of the card. The mage can be promoted to the sorcerer. And when you flip, a, flip it over to get the sorcerer, you actually get one of the sorcerer cards, which are just stronger spells. So that's the advantage of, of the promote, promotion there. There. Moving on to the Explorer. The Explorer is the only character, that the, well, the Explorer and the promoted version, which is the Swashbuckler, are the only characters that can actually, st that can actually step on the Lagoon tiles. Those are the blue ones you saw. The Explorer cannot explore Lagoon tiles, uh, but the Swashbuckler can, which is the promoted version. The Explorer can explore any other land tiles. And this is the Explorer piece. And you'll see I put only one thing because she does not have spirit either. She just has a health. She has a health of four. So we're going to put her down right over here in these woods. So like I said briefly before, there are only two actions that you actually get per character during your turn. Now each character can move, and they get two actions. The only action that can be done twice in a turn is move. So you can move two spaces, but your that, that unit, that character, is done. So I could move one, two, and be done with that character and then move one here and cast a spell. Um, or I could move this character once, uh, let's say the explorer is here. I can move one and then I can explore. So when the explorer reveals a tile like that where it has the, the triangle on it, that actually means you're going to roll a d4. 
what you're rolling for is to see how many cards you get to draw from the uh, the exploration deck. The exploration deck is exclusive to the explorer. So if I would have flipped that over and it would have been a one, I would have drawn one card. If it would have been a two, I'd draw two cards off of the land exploration deck. In this case, I would roll. But just like the peasant, if I was to get a four as a result, Wait, wait, where's the four? Here's the four. So if I would have gotten a a four as a result, then I would have, I would get nothing. I would not draw any cards. But of course, just like the peasant when it's when it's promoted to the cultivator, the explorer is the same way. With the swashbuckler, if I would have had the swashbuckler instead and have promoted it, then I would actually draw those four cards. The next character here is actually the soldier. So we'll put the soldier there. I can take these off. The soldier is one of the two units that can actually fight. Now there are some items that can allow other characters to fight, but the the explorer slash swashbuckler has to find those items, and then you can give them to your other uh, characters, and some of them will allow them to fight. But the soldier comes ready to go into the melee. He's the best character to put in the melee. Uh, he actually gets a d6 to attack with, and just like all the other characters, when you're rolling a d6, if you roll a 6, you actually do no damage. So you want to get a 1 through 5, unless, of course, you promote the soldier. I think you're getting on, you're getting the hang of this. So the knight is the upgraded, the promoted version of the soldier. Uh, and when he promote, when, and a lot of what I didn't mention before about the promoting these characters, is when you promote them, they often come with a boost in the spirit and or health area as well. So you get plus one health uh, to the soldier when you make him a knight. And of course when he is a knight, like I said, you roll the d6. On a six, you do six damage. Uh, the archer, I won't put a piece on her just yet, but the archer is here. Um, she is pretty much the other fighting class, she, but she also, as you may assume, she, she fires at a distance. Between two and three spaces away, she'll actually hit you with an arrow. Uh, but she rolls a d4. It's not a d6, so that would be that'd be pretty broken. But but she does a, a d4, and it's the same way. If she rolls, if she hits a four, then it does no damage. A one through three does, and you can upgrade her to the marksman. So, like I said before, uh, let's say uh, just a sample turn. So so for example, the mage could move, uh, give me some corn, and because he's not a peasant or the cultivator. I just get one, so I put that here, and I'll, I'll, that's that's mine. And then uh, I could move, and let's say if he was an, if he was a bad guy, this explorer, he could move and swing, and he would roll a d6, do some damage. So, like I said, it's only two actions. Uh, this is so the peasant could move. Uh, I could try to get some uh, some nickel, which is the uh, I didn't mention that before, but it's the black. Uh, pieces here, your, your resources. And then so he could say, let's say I want to try to roll for it. Got a two. So I'll get two nickel. Put that there. So that's what you do. So once it's your turn, you move all your, your pieces, and then you do all your actions, and then it moves to the next player. Yeah, so that's the basics of Stratus. Uh, like I said, there's a lot more you can do with the game. Uh, there's a couple different, you know, different things that I didn't cover. Uh, there's some special tiles that you can that are in the game that you can actually it's, it gives you another way to get prosperity points and win. Uh, the best thing about this game is the versatility. Like I was saying, there's so many different ways you can you can construct your team of characters and uh, and get prosperity points. Like I said, there's multiple ways to do it. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, the the versatility of the game is what I think ha gives it a lot of re replayability. Uh, that way you can, you know you can set up a bigger board, a smaller board. Uh, do whatever you want to do, but yeah, that's the game. We're going to do some more videos on this game, I'm sure, um, to show maybe even a full a full game session. We're going to have links to where you can actually buy the game in the description. Uh, I definitely recommend uh, checking that out. Check out the website of the, uh, of the creators. Thanks again, and don't forget to subscribe. It really helps us out a lot when you guys do that. Uh, we're just trying to build a community, just like the guys at Stratos are trying to build a community around their game, so we just want to be friends, you're right, so... Be a friend. And don't forget to be awesome and be a warlock.